take keeping the you know wife woman at yeah. home and don't do this don't do that and men are stronger you know because we bring probably food before you know money, with the, yeah. your money before during the, the cave time you know the yeah. hombre de las cavernas the man went out sí. and had he went hunting because he's faster he's stronger women had to take care of the kids that has been extended to you know later on in society when you don't have to go hunting you have to go to the market and get yeah. you know the meat whatever but however mentally we think that man because has probably more muscles or or probably their voice is stronger or you know whatever or taller, or or, taller yeah. you know you would think that oh man women are not like men yeah. which is an aberration to me right from my perspective with all due respect i think that we should actually uh, engrandecer and respect women beyond because all what they do for us is amazing yeah, yeah. Since being a mother, you know, that's something amazing. And right. the, the sensitivity, the spirituality, mm -hmm. the love, that character is something that we need to admire. And to finish my this, uh, because this is an interview, you no know, a presentation <laughs> from me, I think that if more women would be in position of government and power, life would be on the planet, there would be totally different. I think so. Don't you? I think so. So how do you translate all this inspiration, going back to your point, uh, inspiration from your gran grandmother into design. How do you go from one to the other? Well, I like I mentioned, I was born in Mexico, and I would, for the last 18 years, I would always go to Mexico. And my parents at a very early age of my life said to me, you are Mexicana, even though you live here, and in, in, I was raised in San Diego, you're Mexicana first. And you got to represent that, embrace it, and always be proud of it, regardless of your skin color, regardless of your accent. Because I grew up, my parents both speak in Spanish, so uh -huh. my, my English wasn't as, as perfect. So I took that. I took that very, very early on in my life, and I said, you know what? When I grow up, I'm just going to embrace it. Who cares if people make fun of me? Who cares if they make fun of the way I dress or the way I talk? I have to embrace that because my parents taught me that very early in my life. And then my grandmother taught me the the traditions, the stories, um, the way she would wear her rebozo and, and, and the beautiful rich foods that, that she would cook. So all of that I combine. And throughout my journey, throughout my life, I... I almost I make notes so I would write down everything and and for my collections I would always do for example Dia de los Muertos I grew up celebrating the of life of, of the past uh, the food el pan de muerto las flores uh, las, las velas the candles the pictures of our ancestors um, people that are passed away and I would just sit there and say how do I incorp incorporate that into a fashionable, with a twist, but still uh, holding a very uh, strong traditional collection. And so, Amor Eterno means Dia de los Muertos. Yes. Um, conchas, pan dulce. Right. I grew up my whole life eating conchas. So you express that into your, uh, you integrate those uh, elements into your designs? Yes, yes. And so your customer or your demographic target market market is uh, women uh, Mexican women or Latina women it's a little bit of like believe it or not a lot a lot a lot of different kind of people white Caucasian I have African American it used to be Latinos now it's 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 a little bit of everything which I'm shocked but but I feel grateful for it too What's the most important experience in your field? Because let me tell you, fashion, the fashion industry is tough. Very. Very competitive. Competitive. No, I mean, everything. Now you are giving me time here, which I appreciate very much. <laughs> we have probably 200,000 designers, you know, making yes. and drawing and bringing something new. So it's very competitive. I, when I, when I, when I share this with, my audience and people that um, I do talks with, I, I, I tell them it's very hard. 
every single day is a challenge. But I think that when you design from the heart and you really, really, really work hard and express it, express that story, that collection, whatever it is that you're designing with your audience, then you build this relationship. And, and it makes you stand out from the rest. You're not just designing and, okay, go to my website and buy it. Like, anyone could do that. But you have to take all these steps in order for you to, like, have a very successful collection drop. And I think that that's something that I've taken over the years that it's very hard. It's very competitive. But I feel like you have to find your, almost you have to find your, um, your your passion and really doing it because you want to. I think that a lot of businesses, a lot of designers fail is because they're they just want to do what everybody's doing. They're not really about what what they're about. I feel like they're not authentic. Yes, they're yes. They're following the trends. I, they're following the trends and I think that they get very um desperate when they don't sell because they feel like, "Oh my gosh, like everybody's doing it. Why am I not succeeding?" Well, you don't know what the person has been through in order to get where she's at. So uh, walk me through the business process. So you design, uh-huh. uh, you know, you do the, how do you call it, the style? I, the... I, des- I design, illustrate, pattern, and cut and sew. Okay, so you ha- you do that, you have a shop, you do it from home? Well, well I went to school for, for design, so they taught me to do, well, I went to school for fashion and business. So I think that helped a lot. To start my business, so a few years ago I, I would didn't do, know that there is school for fashion. Yeah, I I did business. product uh, fashion product development. So fifty percent oh, okay. is business and fifty percent is creativity, which right. is sketching. Yeah. Uh, so I took a lot of what I learned from college and um, I just blended in with what I'm working now through life. You know, learning. Um, Walk me through the process. So the first process, the design, process, yes, and then. So okay, you have the piece now. So what's next? Uh, production. I've, I've, thankfully, for the last year, year or so, I've uh, outsourced uh, factories where they cut and sew my pieces because I can't do five hundred, a thousand pieces, realistically, at my home anymore. Right. I have to, in order to grow, I need to outsource. Outsource. And and. Okay, so you you make the piece, design it, then you take. Take the pro, the I mean, how do you call it? The design to uh, to a manufacturer, to a manufacturer, yes. and then you go there and you place an order for, let's say, easy numbers, a thousand yes. pieces. Yeah. Do you order just because you have the the intuition that you're gonna sell, or first you need a PO from some boutiques or stores? Yeah. But first, so, so honestly. I well, I design and illustrate everything at my home, and 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 then I send it out to be made. I personally don't buy two, three thousand of the same shirt because I hate wasting inventory and I hate having sales because I feel like it, I guess this is the way that I'm. My thinking is like. You could buy 3,000 pieces and only sell 1,000, and then you have 2,000 sitting in your invent- in your warehouse. I think that's such a loss of money. So, so how do you so, manage that? So I just, I I get the orders. Okay. So, and then I produce it. Oh, so you pre- you get a pre-order and I then... Do the, I get PPO first and yeah, then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... It's smarter. If, of course. If, if you want to save money... If you don't want to have sales later on, and if you don't have a big space to hold inventory warehouse, it's very smart, very smart. Now, I had a question because I don't know much about your industry, so I get a, a PPO, you know, previous order or whatever, uh-huh. purchase order, and then uh, a guy asked me for order 500 pieces. So, and, and I go to the factory, I order 500 pieces, and then three months uh, Later, the guy calls me and says, you know what? I only sold 100. Do they return the pieces to you or you absorb it or they have to sell it no matter what? Well, there's like a uh, I, there's a, a form that you do. Uh, let's say a store uh, wants 500 pieces and um, you tell like there's no return. No, so all sales are final. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, you had to, you have to be very consistent 
and be very, uh, how do I say this? Like very firm. Like this right. is what I'm selling you. No, no, no unless something's damaged, then we could, you know, re- because I, be- I strongly believe in customer service right. and, and having, um, uh, a, a piece that's wearable. I will, if any if damage or, or something's missing that sure. I work with that. But if they're like, never mind, I don't want it. No. Do, do they pay 30, 60, 90 days or they pay cash? 30. 30 days. Net 30. Net 30. So mm-hmm. you bring, you deliver and mm-hmm. then you present the invoice and they have 30 days to pay you. Yes. So the, 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 at the beginning, the start should be very difficult because if I'm just starting, I have two designs. Yeah. Yes, I, I don't know. And it's very rare because I've been very successful in my e-commerce website where it's very well that I've been getting a lot of phone calls from businesses, like little boutiques where they want right. to sell my merchandise. But I feel like it's, I, I guess it's it's good. But it's also bad, and I guess in my thinking, I rather work with if Target or let's say Nordstrom reach out to me and tell me I want thousand thousands in pieces, and then I think that's worth it because they're not wa- wasting my time. Right. I feel like I work so hard, and if you only want two hundred pieces, then and then you're gonna give me a hard time, then I don't think I could I could work like that. So you already You gotta you gotta really What's the worst mistake you have made in your profession that you can remember? In the very beginning starting my business, you start comparing yourself with other businesses. You start saying, Oh well I gotta I gotta be good like them. I gotta I gotta I gotta step up my game like them. But then throughout my life and journey I've taught myself not to compare myself to to be on my own lane and right. just focus on my business. Everybody else is just doing their own thing too and I think that's very important as someone that wants to start a business to to stay in that almost like in that bubble and 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 find your own vision because if you're spending too much time worrying or or being competitive like how are you going to succeed? Right. But but I see that fashion is very similar. Like right. now, that's why they call it trending. Trending now, you know, let's say yeah. the red, the blue, so, you know, yeah. different colors. So people tend to copy. Oh, yes. yes. To a certain degree. We can call it inspiration, but also <laughs> I think it's copying, correct? Yes. And I who, mean, who sets the trends? The big fashion uh, designers? The French guys. Uh... Well, I think like, well, how I get my inspiration, it's like first I go through my life journey, my, my, my childhood memories. And then I see, because you have to train yourself to, to, to learn what's out in the market. You can't just drop something and not do your research and then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, it looks similar like someone else. Then you didn't really do your homework. So you have to look at fashion trends, what's going out in the world so that maybe I get inspiration, but don't do it 100% the same. You have to, I feel like it can only be 10% that you're inspired by that collection. And then the rest just don't even try to even look at it. So your worst mistake at the beginning was to look at others and try to compare and compete with them and not taking care of your own game, but being more... Yes. You know, observant of what the others were doing. And that was more in my own community. It wasn't about, it wasn't like the big fashion designers it's in Italy. Rain, no, no, stuff. Chanel Valentino. No, it was more like in the community, like who was doing what, who was doing, you know, stuff right, like that. Right, right, and right. that's such a big mistake. And I think a lot of, I get that a lot. Um, like, how do you, how do you do it so you stop that? And it's just, you got to train yourself. Interesting. Now, one question that I would like to ask you, because I am an outsider, okay? I don't know anything about your industry. But when I go to a mall or when I walk, let's say, Hollywood Boulevard or whatever, I see stores that they sell clothing. They have, they sell a blouse for $2, yeah. and they have hundreds of them. And then I go to another area of town, and I see the same. 
I mean, what is that? Is that overproduction? I mean, you're competing with China, with India, or with Bangladesh. Yeah. And how do you overcome all that pressure? Because there is a lot of clothing oh, yeah. out there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, again, it's just 